Hey everyone, this is Erica from BlacksandPeriodFilms.com and today is day 28, the last day of our Write It series for Black History Month 2017. It really is amazing how much time has gone by so quickly. Um, I've learned about a lot of people, I've learned about a lot of events, I have a lot of more, uh, a lot of more, I have a lot more ideas about historical fiction regarding black characters. There's so much we can do. We can do almost anything, really, I think. And so I, I think this series was successful. It did exactly what I wanted to do. Thank you for everyone that has been watching and commenting as well. Today is February 28th, 2017. And on February 28th, 1776, George Washington wrote a letter to Phyllis Whitley in response to her poem titled, His Excellency General Washington. And here is this letter, the letter that he wrote her. You can see February 28, 1776, and it is addressed to Phyllis Whitley. And here is just a, a few lines of the poem that she wrote. A film about the talented poetess Phyllis Whitley would be amazing. She led a very unusual life as an enslaved woman in the 18th century. She experienced a sort of quasi-freedom because although she was a slave, she was free in that she was a published poetess. She was free in that her intellect was nurtured and supported by the family that owned her. And she was free in that she was not required to do any domestic work. Instead, she was allowed and free to pursue her dream of writing poems. Most period films that involve slavery show the enslaved persons that lived and worked on plantations in the South, which I don't have a problem with. Um, of course, I've said a lot of times, I don't think that there can ever be enough quote unquote slavery movies. Um, however, we really get to see the urban slaves of the North. A film about Phyllis Whitley would show that, which would be very interesting to me anyway. There are tons of educational books on her life, tons of them, like just Google it and you'll find a bunch of books about her life, which are geared toward children. But there are, she's, there, she hasn't had any film appearances or series appearances, and that really should change. If I were casting a series of films about Phyllis Whitley, I'd cast Sky Jackson as a young Phyllis Whitley and Aja Naomi King as the older Phyllis Whitley. I think both resemble the few drawings, engravings, and statues that I found of Phyllis Whitley. We can see, you know, similar lips, nose, eyes. The forehead area is also similar, and they're both um, they're both um, have the same similar skin color as her. Um, of course, I know this statue isn't really a representation of her. It's based on a model, but when you look at actual engravings of her, I think she looks similar to that statue. Um, an interesting fact about this picture is that it was done by um, Sepio Moorhead, an enslaved African-American artist who also lived in Boston. And like Phyllis Whitley, Sepio Moorhead was a slave, but he also enjoyed a quasi-freedom as he had the usual rights of a free worker um, as a talented engraver. So I think this, this thread of quasi-freedom would play really well in a film or series about her life. A film about her life could start in West Africa before she was a slave, um, before she was sold into slavery at the age of eight, and end with her untimely death at the age, the very young age of 31, which is very sad. Um, we could see her learn to read, become the toast of the town in 1773 London, fall in love with her husband, John Peters, and become a mother. Her life had incredible highs and devastating lows, it would make for the perfect historical drama or work of historical fiction. She led an amazing, amazing, amazing life. Someone should write it.